High school sports, we've got it covered. Overtime starts now. Hello and welcome to Overtime. I'm Scott Lubber. And I'm Drew Collins. We're happy you could join us for 30 minutes of nothing but high school football. We have a huge game of the week to bring you in the NUIC Conference, plus big northern action from Byron, Oregon, and Winnebago. We also have a blockbuster eight-man game in Milledgeville. We'll see if Jamani Muhammad could run his way into the Nick 10 history books. And in our Spotlight story, I'll show you why the Rochelle Hubs can thank their wrestling program for some of their success they enjoy on the football field. We start in Lena, where you were tonight, Scott. Yeah, Panther country, and tonight the scene of what's become a must-see matchup every year in the NUIC the Lena Winslow Panthers and the Dupac Rivermen. It's the Gillies heating and air conditioning game of the week. Both teams were 5-0 coming into this game. Dupac got the ball first, had a great opening drive, took it inside the Panthers 10. A snap though to Cooper Hoffman, a little off the mark. Jaden Schubert recovered for Lee Wynn, a huge missed opportunity for the Rivermen. Lee Wynn's opening drive, fullback game wild, diving in for the four-yard TD. Two-point conversion time. QB Cash Lussman rolling out. He's got Schubert, and it was 8-0 Panthers. Late in the second quarter, it's going to be the fullback. Wild one more time. Banging into the end zone again. 14-0 Lee win. Now, 49 seconds to go in the half. Cooper Hoffman on the keeper. He's got a three-yard TD. That made it 14-6, so we had a game right before the half, right? Well, look at this. Following kickoff goes off the hands of a Panther. Jalen Makowska picks it up. He's got himself a little opening, and that's all he needs with his speed. He is gone 75 yards, 22 to 6. A big momentum swing right before the half. Lee wins ball opening drive third quarter. Alex Schlichting, big block there by Gannon Dunker. That's a four-yard TD. It was 30 to 6. Late in the third quarter, Schlichting again. Gonna pop this one up the middle. He's the 100 meter record holder in track and field at Linwin. You see that speed, 35 yards on that one, 38 to six. We had a running clock in the fourth quarter. After Linwin scored again, Cooper Hoffman fired two late TD passes for Dupac. Great catch there by Jackson Diedrich for a 31 yard TD. Linwin takes this one impressively, 46 to 22. Talk me through the kick return, what you saw, what you were thinking. Huh? Um, it ended up going past uh, Merrick Man, and that's fine. And uh, I picked it up, took it to the right, and ended up seeing a gap, great blocking. Saw a gap and then just hit it hard. This feels awesome, you know, making big plays and doing a little celebration, a little 100 meter dash finish on them. It felt pretty good. We practiced like this for about 10 days now, and. Uh, Weren't sure if you'd still get the same outcome tonight, you know, but uh, our, our kids came out and they played their butts off and we controlled both sides of the line of scrimmage and we, and we actually played the pass pretty well. Very impressive Panthers. Also in the NUIC, Stockton beat Forreston 44 to 20. Morrison defeated Dakota 49 to six. Galena wins 28 to seven over Fulton and EPC destroyed Westmont in a non-conference game 54 to eight. Now in Rochelle, there was a key game in the Interstate Eight Conference. The Hubs hosted a strong Morris team. Ran Wild covered that one for us. Ran, what do you have? Well, guys, this was a good one. Morris is always strong in football. Last week, they destroyed a Caneland team that had been undefeated. Morris and Rochelle both had 4-1 to records coming into this game, so we knew it was going to be a fight. Now, the Hubs knew they had to win this conference game, and they came to play. Morris received the first kick of the game, but the Hubs quickly took over on downs and got themselves on the board first with a Dylan Manning long run to the end zone. And with a converted extra point, Rochelle was on top. Little hero shot here as he celebrates. We love a good touchdown, but tonight was all about the Hubs defense. Everywhere Morris went, Rochelle put a quick stop to them, like the play here made by Gavin Neal. Keeping that momentum going with more defense, as the Hubs gave these Morris running backs absolutely nowhere to go, taking them down here once again. Now Rochelle takes over on downs, and I'm definitely glad I kept recording here because I have no idea how Manning came out of this one, but there he goes with nothing but green in front of him, extending the lead to 13 to nothing with less than a minute to go in the first quarter. I can't believe he's not tired at this point because he had nothing but green. Now Morris continuing to fight, making some good plays here, like this one with a nice handoff to Caden Curran, but unfortunately it wasn't enough to get them on the board in the first half. Now the Hubs gave themselves a greater lead, and why not give it to Manning once again? He gives, the Ro he gives Rochelle the lead of 21 to nothing at the half, and he had 217 yards and four touchdowns on nine carries tonight. And did I mention that he's only a sophomore? 
Rochelle held on to this one. The final score was 37 to 15. Now before tonight, Morris led the conference in scoring. I think it says a lot about this Rochelle defense to step up when it matters. Guys, back to you. Thanks, Rianne. We'll have more on the Hubs later in our Spotlight story. In a huge eight-man football game in Milledgeville, Polo defeated the Missiles 30-14. to These might be the two best eight-man teams in the state. They were both undefeated going in. In other eight-man games tonight, River Ridge slid past AFC 48-46. to Orangeville beat Hiawatha 42-22. to West Carroll beat Christian Life 48-21. to And Amboy won 46-14 over Flanagan Cornell. In other area games, Sycamore beat Caneland 35-7, and Tinley Park Andrew beat DeKalb 54-21. Johnsburg beat Marengo 34-7, and Woodstock North beat Harvard 42-28. We move along next to the Nick 10. We're going to see if the Harlem Huskies can keep the momentum going, and if Jamani Muhammad made another big splash into the record books. Well, through the first four and a half weeks of the season, the Harlem Huskies were winning games, but they were still struggling to get things on track. And then in the second half of the Guilford game last week, I mean, they found themselves. They dominated Guilford and won. That improved the Huskies' record to 5-0. Could they keep that momentum going tonight against a Freeport team that needs to stack some more wins to get into the playoffs? And could Jamani Muhammad rush for 100 yards and become the Nick 10 all-time rushing leader? Pink jerseys tonight for Harlem. You absolutely have to love this. Huskies trailing in the second. The give is the Jamani Muhammad, and this was the play that broke the all-time record for rushing in the Nick 10. No stopped play, but a hug from a big old lineman will have to do for now. Huskies at the goal line. The QB sneak with Nate Johnson makes it a 14-13 Husky lead, and Nate's going to go ahead and celebrate with the boys and make it rain. Freeport ball. You remember Cameron Verner? I'm sure you do because watch this. Spin cycle out of the tackle, and he runs all the way to the end zone. So that's some serious speed right there by number one. Two-point conversion. The give is to Ben Summers, and he plows his way into the end zone. The Freeport defense stays strong, and the Pretzels win 22-14. Our Nick 10 analyst, Tim Bailey, joins us now with some thoughts on this game. Tim, how much more improved is this? Um, pretzels team just from the years past to now. Well, I'll tell you, you know, you got to tip, tip your head off the pre for, for number one going into Husky Stadium and getting mm. that big victory. Congrats, Coach Devin and his team. But as it relates to, you know, how much improved they are, they're a much more improved team in the, than they were last year. It looks like they, they got, guys have bought in to what he wants to do over there at Freeport. And tonight it showed they had big play on offense, they had big play on defense, and they just willed themselves to this victory tonight against Harlem. Tim Harlem played so well last week in that second half against Guilford. They really finally got things clicking. But then tonight, offensively, they only scored 14 points. So what, what, what did you think of the Harlem offense Well, tonight? you know, it, it, you know, just the inconsistency that you saw on offense. You know, some three downs, you know, not picking up first downs when they needed first downs. Uh, they tried to fake punt tonight. Um, you know, that, that, that went south. So, you know, there's a lot of things that they need to fix offensively in order to be able to get these last three wins in order to have a good spot in the playoffs. But again, you know, they just need to, they, they need to do better on offense. That front, that front line needs to do a better job. You have the best back in the league in Jamani Muhammad. And that's all you have to do is just give them a millisecond to be able to get through, squeeze through. The, kid, the, the kids are four, five, four, six kids. So you, you can't say it's his speed. The line has to do a better job of getting those bodies moved out of the way so he can do his thing. And what does this mean for Jamani Muhammad to break the record like he did tonight? How big of a moment is that for him? Well, first, you know, I got to say congratulations, Jamani. If you're at home watching, congrats. Keep up the good work. There's more work left to do. Um, but as it relates to him getting this, this, this uh, feat here, uh, you know, he put in the work. You know, the young man put in the work. He's put in work four years. Again, remember, he played um, varsity, you know, as he, as he was a sophomore. And Scott, you can remember standing up here. We said, wow, we got two more, year, two more years of this young man. So, again, you know, um, tip my hats off to him. Um, you know, it, it, was a, it was a momentous night for him uh, and the Huskies. Again, uh, you, know, they, you know, they gave him great adulation. You know, the stands stood up, clapped their hands, gave him great adulation. And the announcer made a made an announcement over the intercom, you know, your Nick 10 now, your Nick 10 leading rusher, Jamani Muhammad. So, you know, he, he understands what's at stake now. He wants, Jamani wants to go to the playoffs. Jamani wants to go to state. I think this feat tonight was, was, was sort, of, sort of just like something that he put now, he's gonna put away, he's gonna put in his toolbox. But I think going forward, he's focused. He wants to actually win going forward. 
And the record he broke was set just last year by yes. Javius Catlin yeah, of the East Catlin. D-Rabs. So yes. we'll get Javius's name out there. All right, let's get to some more Nick 10 action at Wyatt Stadium. The Boylan Titans took on the winless Auburn Knights. Titans were looking to improve the 5-1 and one on the season. Knights here, Dwight Williams going to juke, but he has stopped. Charlie Mayer, one of the best linebackers around, brings him to a stop for no gain. Boylan at the 3 now. Jaden Williams at QB. Screen pass to Alex Hernandez, who makes his way in for the score. More Jaden Williams here. This time he's going to use those quick feet. Going to scramble out of the pocket. Then fires over to Caleb Nelson, but Noah Lara for Auburn makes the defensive play, breaking it up. Titans now in the red zone. Donzel Ingram Love taking the carry. Oh, that was so easy for him. Touchdown. Boylan wins big, 41-8. to at Swanson Stadium, Jefferson took on Guilford. Vikings honestly need to win this one to keep their playoff hopes alive. Guilford's quarterback steps back to throw, but it's LaShawn Gathright jumping the route and taking this one for six. As if he doesn't score enough touchdowns on the offensive side of the ball. Here's another, but this time on the defense. Grayson Weber rolling to his right, and he finds big number eight, Tayshawn Taylor, for some good yardage after a couple broken tackles. Guilford turns to the run game. Now Isaiah Primus finds the hole, keeps moving those legs, and gets inside the 10. Guilford stays on the ground. Isaiah Primus with an easy walk-in touchdown to take back the lead, and the Vikings never looked back. Guilford takes this one 28-14. to The other big two teams in the Nick 10 both won easily tonight. Belvedere North beat Belvedere 49 to nothing. The Blue Thunder are 6-0. Hananiga beat East. 44 to 15, the Indians are 5 and 1. Tim's still with us. Now let's get back to those two games, the first two games that we showed. Boylan's win over Auburn, Guilford's win over Jefferson. Titans now are 5 and 1 and eligible for the playoffs, but it's kind of a quiet 5 and 1, mm -hmm. partly because the toughest part of their schedule is still in front of them yeah. right now. Next week they travel to Hananiga, then they host Harlem, then they finish by playing Guilford. So uh, that. That's Boylan's. We need to see Boylan's remaining games, please. Uh, so th their biggest win was a so over a solid East team, 25-6 in Week 2. And we all recall how Belvedere North dominated the Titans a couple of weeks ago. So how good should the Titans feel right now, Tim, about their situation? They should feel pretty good. Uh, you know, don't get comfortable. Don't get complacent. But, you know, feel good about this victory. A victory is a victory. you got a W up on the board. But do understand that there's more work left to be done. Okay, so... Uh, with that, all that being said, I think they just need to relish tonight, relish the moment, and get back to business tomorrow afternoon when they go to practice or Monday. Mm -hmm. Guilford's win against Jefferson puts the Vikings record at 3-3. Three and three. They need to win two of the remaining three games to become eligible for the playoffs. Let's look at their remaining opponents. They play at Freeport next week. Then they host East. We know the E-Rabs will be up for that game. And the E-Rabs might be battling to get into the playoffs as well. And then the Vikings finish at Boylan. So, Tim, what do you think about the Vikings' chances of getting to the five-win mark to make these playoffs? You know, look, guys, I, I think everybody has a chance, um, to be honest with you. The teams that we just mentioned, Boylan and now Guilford, I think these two teams, this team here has a chance as well. They go Freeport, then they go East, they go Boylan. But, again, you know, relish that victory against Jefferson and do understand you have three teams. A, a team up there, Freeport, comes off a big win tonight. you got three teams left on your schedule that anything can happen on any given Friday. Right. They're going to have to play clean football, Guilford, yep. to, to win those games Absolutely. but yeah it's not like any of those are lopsided right. mismatches mm -hmm. right. yeah. folks if you want more from Tim on Nick 10 football check out the Bailey pod you can find it on YouTube his guest this week is Harlem head coach Jim Morrow thank you very much Tim Appreciate we'll you guys. talk with you again next week Absolutely. coming up in a bit later we're going to spotlight the Rochelle Hubs right yeah but next we'll have back to the highlights from the big northern conference we're going to head to Byron Oregon and Winnebago Genoa Kingston was hot and cold through the first five weeks of the season. The Cogs won three games and lost two. The Byron Tigers have been hot, it seems, since the end of the Ice Age. <laughs> In the first five weeks of this season, no opponent came closer than 31 points to the Tigers. And that was with the Tigers playing their backups half the time. Wow. Well, tonight the Tigers hosted the Cogs down in Byron. Owen Sackard and the Cogs with a football here. Sackard uh, loses the handle on it, though. That's a pretty good defense, though, by the Tigers. It pops free. Byron may have recovered that ball. Here they are on offense. Andrew Talbert faking it, keeping it. Oh, he's got big yardage there. So tough to bring down. Lost in the commotion. 
Number 45, Caden McGowell. He actually got the ball, ran around the outside for the score as they faked it up the middle. 7-0 Tigers. After mishandled pump on the Cogs, Braden Nolan, the Tigers had it in field position. He adds to the lead 14-0. G Case Patrick Young now on the return after the touchdown. Hey, that's going to put the Cogs in some pretty good business right around midfield. But, of course, Byron's defense cracked down, forcing a fourth in short. Maddox Drayheim getting to the QB for the sack. Byron dominated this one 52 to nothing. It was a big game for Stillman Valley and for Oregon tonight in Oregon. They're both striving to make those playoffs. The score was 14-13 at the half. That's where we find Stillman's quarterback Ryan Roof keeping in and finding a hole on the left side. Back the other way, Oregon with it. A counter to Keaton Salisbury stalking his claim to a big gain down the left side for Hawks before he was being tackled there, right there on the sideline. Defense wasn't letting too much happen in the third. However, Oregon's D had trouble with Jackson Barrett on this one as he spins his way forward for a big gain. But the Hawks' defense clamped down once again. Third down for Stillman. Ryan Roof back to pass, trying to find Jackson Uziel, but Keaton Salisbury coming up with a big tip away. Fourth down for Stillman, they run a reverse to Mizzou, who's gonna throw it down the field for Cohen Ryanhold, but number two is in a battle with number two, Cooper Johnson, that also falls incomplete. Oregon would add a score late in the game, and Oregon took it 21 to 13. The Hawks improved to three and three. The Dixon Dukes have been destroying everyone in their path. There was more of that tonight at Winnebago. Indians on third down, try to get going on an end around run. Isaac Goldman and company, though, stopped them in their tracks. Dukes now from the 43, Colin Shaner faking out the camera guy and the defense of the Indians. He's got nothing but the end zone in front of him. Touchdown, Dukes. Winnebago on the punt. And it's on a line. It's right through everybody's hands. Grant Bonds recovers the ball, starting um, the offensive possession now. Dixon's ball here. Shaner going to run to his left this time. Scampers in for the touchdown. Dukes win really wow. big, 70 to seven. Also in the big northern, North Boone defeated Rock Falls 28 to 14. The Vikings improved their record to three and three. Rockford Lutheran was idle tonight. This was the Crusaders week to play Rockford Christian. Let's take another brief time out. When we come back, we'll have our weekly spotlight feature story. We'll spotlight the Rochelle Hubs, football and wrestling to bring out the best of their athletes in both sports. Rochelle Hubs always have a strong teams in both football and in wrestling. The two sports go hand in hand in that community where power football is played and led by several of the school's top wrestlers. That's our Spotlight Story brought to you by Benchmark Exteriors. The Rochelle Hubs football team feeds off physicality. Like many of the years in the past, this year's team is as physical as anyone in the state line. Coach Kyle Kissick believes physicality determines success. You know, being as physical as possible gives us the best opportunity to be successful just with the group of kids that we have and the makeup of the kids that we have. Um, and again, it's a, it's a community-wide identity. And um, you know, it's something that you know, we've been able to you know, sustain success with for quite a long time here. We expect every one of our kids to be relentless. There's, there's no obstacle, there's no barrier um, that they're not gonna find a way to get through. You know? and, and that has a lot to do with their work ethic. There's no short leash of work ethic from these hubs starting with senior lineman Caden Morris. He's a four-year all-conference guard and won the conference best lineman award last year. In wrestling, he also finished second in the state last year at 215 pounds. I think we all enjoy being physical. I mean, me personally, that's my favorite thing about football. I like to hit someone, I like to hit them the whole game. And I feel like that's just a big part of our success. Senior fullback and corner Xavier Villalobos finished fifth that state for 125 pounds and is an all-conference DB. Senior running back and linebacker Grant Gensler won regionals at 165 pounds and rushed for over 1,000 yards and 12 touchdowns. They both shared some of those similarities that translate from the wrestling mats to under the lights on Friday night. In wrestling, you know you got to be more balanced on your feet in all types of positions and being physical with just takedowns or in general. Uh, with football, you got to be balanced on your feet, uh, squaring your hips, making sure you're driving off the ball and being able to hit people hard and make the tackle. Definitely uh, having good hips, good balance is something you need for both sports, so uh, they kind of work together in that way. Xavier's cousin, Roman Villalobos, is a junior running back and linebacker. He also wrestles. 
He stated the importance of physicality with the team's hard-nosed running game and why that can lead them to a deep playoff run this year. I'd say it's really important because we still run the wing tee. You know, a lot of teams have moved on to passing and more spread. So with the wing tee, you have to be physical or else you won't move the ball anywhere. If we all want to make a deep run in the playoffs, you know, especially being knocked out last year in the first round, we just all want to come and prove something this year. Last winter in wrestling, the Hubs went to state as a team. They would love to do the same in football this year. You know, they have never made it to state in football, but they've come very close a few times. We'll be right back after one final timeout. Each week at this time, we recognize the top play caught on our cameras. It's our play of the night brought to you by Napleton Auto Group. We go back to the Lee Win Dupac game right before halftime again. That kickoff by Dupac after the Dupac TD. It is Jalen Rakowska, one of the best all around athletes in the area. Baseball, Listen. basketball, football, he can do it all. <laughs> and there he just broke Dupac's back from that 75 yard kick return for the touchdown. Jalen Rakowska comes through with our play of the night. Let's look ahead to next week. These will be the games in the Nick 10. Belvedere at Jefferson, Auburn at Belvedere North, Guilford at Freeport, Harlem at East, and Boylan at Hananiga. These will be the games in the Big Northern Conference. Stillman Valley at Genoa, Kingston, Byron at Winnebago, Oregon at Rock Falls, Lutheran at North Boone, and Dixon as a non-conference game at undefeated Johnson City, way down by Carbondale. Here are the games in the NUIC. Galena, Deco Degle Galena at Dakota, excuse me, Lita Winslow at EPC, Fulton at Depec, Morrison at Stockton, and Forreston at Hazel Green, Wisconsin. In other area games, Rochelle has another big one at home against Caneland. Sycamore travels to LaSalle, Peru. Marengo takes on Harvard, and DeKalb plays at Wabonzi Valley. In eight-man football, it's the AFC at Hiawatha, Aldine Hebarn at River Ridge, Milledgeville at South Beloit, Christian Life at Polo, and Puerto Heights at Amboy. Join us again next Friday night for overtime. We'll be on right after Fox's coverage of the Northwestern Maryland game that kicks off at 7 o'clock. So we should be on sometime between 1030 and 11 p.m. For another look at the entire show or for scores and highlights of individual games, go to mystateline.com anytime. That does it for this episode. Thanks for joining us. Good night and enjoy your weekend.